Welcome back to What Are Team Noobs with General Disturbance. Well, this battle has started very, very late. Um, no countdown at all, really, so to speak. But we've got a GW Tiger, which is, of course, the Tier 9 German SPG on the south spawn of Erlenburg, and it's under the command of Hospitals. And it's surprising that he's not in a bishop. Yes, he's actually chosen be a different party. Well, the last time we saw him, he was actually in an M44, but this time he's chosen the German SPG, and he's got the big 21 centimeter howitzer. Yep, there you go. 21 centimeter, 900 alpha, 53 millimeters of pen, 11.4 meters burst radius, and a stun of 12 and a half to 31 seconds. So it's a big stunner. Okay, making his way over to the west side of the river. From here, you can actually get great shots on the enemy as they come into the castle, if they try to come in from the north route. Ready to go. Okay, standard reload, 40.27 seconds, but his reload is 34.42. So he has knocked off at least six seconds off the reload. Okay, what have we got there? We've got a Yudas. He gets a direct hit with his first shot. And I like it that he actually stayed to watch the shot as well. I think he wanted to test and see, was it going to hit the target? Now, one of the bad things about the uh, big howitzer, the 21 centimeter, is you don't get that many shells. In fact, you only get 15 in total, so you have to make the best use of them. Now, it does have a longer reload than the 17 centimeter howitzer and fewer shells, but it does do a lot of damage. As I said, 900 alpha rounds out straight away. Another direct hit this time on the Sharp U204. So he's starting to rack up the damage. He's also elected to carry a couple of rounds of the extra HE and one armor piercing round as well. Now, that can be useful when you come up against the target. That happens to be very lightly armed. Of course, you might get a pin with that armor piercing, capable of doing 640 alpha and 296 millimeters of penetration, which means if it's slightly armored, you're almost certainly going to get a pin on the target. Rounds out. Another direct hit. Oh, he's racking them up. Every shot so far has done some damage. And I hope that doesn't jinx him. You know, I don't tend to watch these replays until they happen. I'm watching them for the first time as you're watching them, trying to interpret what Hospitals is up to, and then obviously to give my take on it. Well, that Yudas is going to go out of the game with the next shot if he gets it on target. So I think he's about to get his first kill any second now. Well, the Yudas pulls back, and that kind of upsets his rhythm. But he's coming to the castle. Rouse out. Oh, unfortunately, it was a bit of a snap there. I think he was worried that he might not get sight of the Yudas again. So he fired. Unfortunately, it landed short. In fact, actually, I'm not so sure it landed short. More so that it actually went long and over the top of the Yudas. Anyway, he's reloading. The object 140 next. Certainly that Yudas will suffer if he tries to go up against any teammate. Oh, now he's he's come back to the same spot, Creature of Habit. And we love Creatures of Habit if we're an RT players, because when they make that mistake of coming back to the same spot, we can dial in on them and then get damage. He's about to go. Rouse out. Oh, and again, it seems I did jinx him, because now he's having difficulty trying to get the angle on that Yudas. He's got a bit closer to the tree line. I'm sure he's going to give it another go. That object 140 is headed for the town. Seven rounds of stun HE left. But I think he can get the kill on the Udes. Almost ready. Here we go. Two seconds, one. Rounds out straight away. Oh, he pulled back just as the shell landed. But the kill does go to somebody else. In fact, it goes to the FB4005. And that means his chance of getting a Confederate are still intact. 
Now, if you're wondering, the last time we actually saw Hospitals play, we saw he was actually scrolling the mouse slowly across the field. He does know about the quick way to actually move the aim point from one to another by using the control key and then clicking with his right mouse key on the minimap. He does know about that method. In fact, there's, as he said, method in his madness. That was his own words. What he does is when he scrolls in these small amounts, he actually keeps the aim dialed in mostly on targets. And if he sees the target of opportunity, he can then take that shot at the target of opportunity. And he'll almost be certainly fully dialed in or nearly fully dialed in when he takes the shot. Whereas if he actually does the quick method of moving from one spot to another, he has to go the whole process of dialing in again fully. And that, of course, actually takes away the opportunity of getting a quick shot on the enemy. But uh, so he actually likes to do it his way. Um, it's, it's, there is an idea behind it. So it's not that he doesn't like the other method. It's just that he's got another technique and it seems to work for him. Okay, so he's gone to the east side of the map because there were some enemy tanks up here that were doing damage on our guys in the town. The 263s decided to pull back as he was receiving fire. Oh, he received fire, all right. That's 375. And he got stun assist immediately afterwards as well. So that's doubly worthwhile on that one. Okay, Yegru trying to cross the river. Now, he's got a bit more to go, but we're not going to be loaded in time. And he's actually chosen to use the extra HE now, the non-stun HE. Let's have a quick look round. There's no enemy nearby at the moment, as far as we can tell. He might be wanting to change position to not to avoid counter battery, but just to get a better angle on the enemy. We well, can see the enemy RT is definitely over on the east side of the map. We saw the shell come in. And we're now looking at a Jaegeru back near the enemy cap area. And he's just going behind that house, but doesn't give us a chance to fully dial in. But look at this, two enemy tanks, including an E-100 and a T-30. Now we can definitely hit the E-100, except of course there was a red line there momentarily. He tried to go for the T-30 instead. So he didn't get anything from that one. Now we can see the Jaegeru hiding behind the rocks. There's also a Conqueror coming in. And our Super Conqueror just got around into him. Up on top of the hill, a pattern tank. I have the feeling that Horse Force wants to hit the Jaegeru. And this might be the right shell to do it with. Rounds out. Oh, it went long. Uh, it looked like it went very long, actually. RNG was not kind. He's now back into the stun HE. The one problem with the GW Panther with the Top Gun is that you can actually run out of ammo before the end of the game. It's, it is possible to do that. Okay, he's going to use the stun. Going for the Yeguru. Rounds out. Yeah, he got a hit, but it didn't kill him. So again, he's still preserving his possibility of getting a Confederate. Now, on this side of the map, we've got the E-100. Our Patton tank is looking to have a shot on him. And we've got another Yeguru trying to come around the outside. That's the one that was up near the enemy cap. He's come all the way down by the outside route. But we're going to be loaded momentarily. I think he's after the pattern. But we might be able to hit him just as he's going through that gap. Rounds out. I don't understand how that shell could go so far astray. But I think now it's Hospitals having to preserve his life by moving as far over to the west side of the map as he can to get a better angle on that Jaegeru. If he's too close to the river when the Jaegeru turns up, he could get spotted. The, that Jaegeru has gone. The one that was from the enemy cap, he's gone. And the scores are now even. Can we get a shot on the E-900? Well, he's just gone through the gap to try and get at our pattern, and I think our pattern's about to die. 
He's right down near the bridge. And yet there was nowhere he could go without getting shot at. Rounds out. That's a hit. 235 off the E900. Now he's loading the, H, uh, the AP round this time. The only lightly armored vehicles on the enemy team at the moment are the AMX 13105, too much of a fast mover, the Patton tank, or the Object 263, or, or the enemy RT for that matter, who's a patch at 15555. He's decided to load it right now, but he's looking for a target. And he's got a slight reticule occlusion there, which means something is blocking the shot. T-30's moving up on our guys. Now, he could penetrate a T-30. Unfortunately, we just lost the E-5. Look, he's trying to dial in as close as he can. It's a difficult one. T-30 goes down to the Super Conqueror. Oh, no, he actually... It was the K-91PT who actually got him. But he's looking back. He's pulling back. And we just lost the T-30. They lost the Jaeger. There's the E-900. Okay. Can we get the arm piercing round into him? He's coming close. Here we go. He's getting very close. He's trying to get a perfect shot. Unfortunately, that building is a little too tall, but if he can get a shot, it's going to be once the guy goes past the rubble. I think this shot here is going to be way too dangerous. He has got a, a, a green line, but it's not covering the vehicle. This is covering the vehicle. Oh, he got it! He got a pen! 599 hit points for a pen into the side of a Ye oh, it was an E900. That's a lot of damage. And that's really changed the battle because it went the E900 went down very quickly. And these guys are very low on hit points now. The enemy's only got 550 left. There's the enemy RT, the bat chat. So we're down to two left on each team. And Hospitals is the RT. He gets something near, he gets some damage on the bat chat 155.55. There he is, he's just behind the building. Now remember, that's the single shot version of him and the super comp takes care. And now it's just the AMX 13105. I, I think he knows we're over here, but he can't see us. And therefore he can't do any damage whilst we're over here. Because he's got just got too far to drive. And if he does drive over here, we will get a shot at him, and so will the Super Conk. Okay, now, he's got no ammo left, so what he's doing is he's acting as a distraction, and it worked, because he was looking at us, and he went down to the Super Conk, and we won the game. Sometimes in a battle, when you run out of shells, all you can do is distract the enemy or scout for your teammates. In this one, Hospitals acted as a distraction. The AMX 13105 didn't know if Hospitals was going to shoot or the Super Conqueror was going to nail him. And with that distraction from one side, the Super Conk was actually able to get the kill shot that won the game. That was a first class tanker for Hospitals in the GW Tiger, the Geschusswagen Tiger. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 10. And his winning from that game, 3,665, which is Super Unicum standard. If we look at team score, we can see that he didn't get the highest damage, but he certainly did well in the game. The Super Conqueror got 9,154 hit points, and he picked up three medals. He got the high caliber. He also picked up a steel wall, and on top of that, he got a top gun as well. In fact, he was one short of getting a Radley Waters. And in second place, oh, by the way, win eight for him, 15,274. Big player. Very good. Good play. Second highest damage went to the enemy E-900. 
the tank that we actually, or that uh, Hospitals actually hit with an arm-piercing round right into his side, 3,669 3, hit points to him. And in third place, we've got Hospitals with 3,438 hit points of damage. So third place on damage, and that was very good in that battle, the Tier 10 game. When it came to kills, yes, the Super Conqueror, he got seven kills in that game. Two kills went to the FP4005, the Heshbarn, the T30 on the enemy team, their Amex 13105, and their Patton tank. And, well, in joint third place, there's a lot of players because it's all the ones who only got one kill each. And when it came to base XP, it's actually second place because the Super Conk managed 1,699 base, the only player to get over 1,000 in the game. And in second place, Horseballs got 970. And in third place, we got the Object 752 with 851. So let's have a look at detail. He fired all 15 rounds of ammunition. He actually kept the, um, uh, the rounds, the armor piercing, until he could actually do something good with it against the E900, and it worked. He then used the last round he had available to try and take out the Batch at 155.55. From that point onwards, there was not a lot he could do except distract the enemy, but that worked. He got seven direct hits on the enemy, one penetrating shot. Of course, that was the shot into the side of the E900. He also got 12 splash damage of 3,438 hit points, all a bit at more than 300 meters. Damage seven of the enemy, killed one. Didn't get the Confederate, though, unfortunately. Mainly down to the fact, of course, there was somebody who actually managed to score more. 886 hit points of stun assist off 11 stuns. Now, he did. He was on a free-to-play account on this time, and he did suffer a small loss in this game of 1,034 credits. But it's uh, compensated by the fact he did get 4,850 experience points out of it as well. And, of course, they got the win. So, yes, yeah, sadly missed out on the Confederate... But it was a really good game and it worked very well. We can see it was the batch at 155.55 on the enemy team who actually picked up the Confederate and he had nine and one. So, yes, eight difference, whereas the hospitals only had a, a one difference or a six uh, difference, rather. So not, not much he could do to beat that guy because he was really pushing the shells out. And, of course, he's got a faster reload than hospitals and he has more shells available to do it. But um, Hospitals did as best he could, and it worked. So, very good game there by Hospitals. Very unusual to see him in something other than the Bishop. But, of course, he's still working on getting his third mark for this one. So, I think we'll be seeing him in more battles featuring other RT. If you enjoyed this replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.